Hi everyone. Welcome back. I have to put on my reading glasses because I want to look professional. <laughs> uh, today I'm going to be looking at um, <clears throat> a video and I'm going to be reacting to it. Original YouTube content right here. Man, I, it's been a couple weeks. I forgot how to do YouTube. How do I do YouTube, guys? Right, I need to have an explosive intro. Whoa, what's up, guys? So there's this channel called Jubilee and they, uh, they did a video series called I'm something 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 ask me anything and they have all these strangers that come in and uh, they talk to a furry and they just ask him anything. So I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna react to the questions that people ask. This could be a nice romantic evening. You and me, just Netflix and chilling. Just YouTube and chilling it up. Just sit back and relax. Come relax with me. Let's watch some videos together. I'm a furry, ask me anything. Furries know how to party. Don't get it twisted, okay? Help somebody! Some topics are hard to approach. They don't know really what a furry is. <laughs> Either the subjects are inaccessible. Reasons I am better than you at furry. Or people are uncomfortable discussing them. So we found those subjects in person, rented a space in Los Angeles, and invited our audience and strangers to come in and ask them anything. <laughs> if it's anonymous like this, these questions are gonna be good. I'm Bo, and I'm a fursuit maker in the furry fandom, and I'm here to answer questions about the furry community. <laughs> I'm sorry, I just seen the foot. I got scared. <laughs> Where did it start? Like, wh wh how old were you, I guess, when you found out, like, you looked at Tony the Tiger, and you were like, you know what? Like, where, where did it start? Dang, was it? Tony the Tiger kind of thick. I don't know. <laughs> um, oh God, I was, uh, I think I was like 12. I was just browsing YouTube, and I saw a bunch of furries dancing, and I was like, dang, I want one of those. And so I made one, and then it just haven't stopped ever since. Uh, Bo, you're an amazing fursuit maker, and I've seen you dancing up there on the dance floor. You're amazing, just wanna put that out front. I also got into uh, conventions by watching the furries dancing on stage, so I, I love doing this. I just, I feel so smart when I do this. <laughs> I don't know if you guys have noticed, but yes, I'm wearing some really cute fursuit glasses. I got it from this place called fursuitglasses.com, so if you guys want some, go check it out. Also, not only that, but you get interchangeable lenses too. So like if you want red glasses, you can change them out. This, this will literally pop off and you can like put lenses in. Super easy. And they're super stylish. They have like different designs. If you, you know, if you don't like the nerdy design, you can go with the more hipster design. But yeah, you know, if you want some first two glasses, go check them out. I definitely am feeling these. I, I'm i gonna wear this for the rest of the video. I feel nerdy and smart and handsome. My only context around what furries are is from like a CSI episode. Of course. <laughs> It's always a CSI episode. Um, for those young kids in my audience that don't know the context behind this CSI episode, um, there was a CSI episode about furries and it basically cast a very bad image of the furry fandom that it's like this big kink. And ever since then, the entire public has really cast a bad shadow <laughs> on the furry fandom. That damn CSI episode. Is being a furry strictly a sexual thing? Absolutely not. That is by far the most annoying misconception. On a base level, it's just about art, it's just about costumes, and it's just about being yourself. Yeah, I think that's a good answer. I don't think I could answer it better. <laughs> I mean, of course, I have like thumbnails that are like overly sexualized for clickbait. You know, you gotta play the YouTube game right, but um, I definitely agree. There is definitely a sexual aspect to the furry fandom, but its purpose is not fetish base. It's more of like a celebration of your character and who you are. You get to kind of be a, an extension of yourself, but blah, 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 you already heard all that. <laughs> How does your family feel about you being a furry? My family is very supportive. Mm -hmm. um, they've taken me to the conventions. They were actually the ones to tell me to start making costumes as a... Okay, you are really lucky to have your parents and your family like fully accept you for being a furry. That's awesome. I think you are one of the success stories <laughs> of uh, people who, who came out to their family as a furry. That's really cool though. I'm, I'm happy to hear that. Not everyone has stories like that, obviously. Um, with me, my parents actually found out through YouTube. <laughs> I don't know how they found my channel. They just found it. I think my dad watches my videos every week. 
Hi dad. <laughs> so it was a little bit awkward like finding out that they that they discovered my channel and that they watch my stuff. But um, I'm not gonna change the way that I make my videos because they see it. So my parents know that I'm a furry. My sister knows I'm a furry. Everyone is, now everyone in my family knows, knows that I'm a furry and they watch my YouTube videos. It's cool. I'm an adult. It's fine. <laughs> but I think when you're a kid, it's a lot different because when you're a kid, and I'm, I'm taking this from, from Jenna Marbles, you go through a lot of firsts. You go through your first relationship, your first breakup, your first, you know, coming into the person that you are now. Like you're continuously changing and it's very stressful. So my situation is like a lot easier than uh, say a teenager's situation that has to, you know, <laughs> deal with their parents every single day, go to school, but then also like they're struggling with their identity. I feel you, okay? You're going through a, something completely different than I am. You're completely fine with, you know, staying in the closet about being a furry if you're not comfortable with coming out with your parents. But if you feel like that they'll, you know, it'll be a good thing for you, then just tell them. Or if it's like really wearing on you, just tell them, I don't know. I'm not very good at giving this kind of advice though. <laughs> Sorry, that was a tangent. Continuing. Is it mostly just like a form of like creative expression? Um, or is there something deeper going on? In the I cosmos? think it's probably on lines of both because it, as much as it is an amazing way to express yourself, people who have issues with mental health find particular comfort in the furry fandom mm. because it's a little bit more, just something's very appealing to it. It's comforting. I've. And yeah. kind of come out of my shell a little bit in different aspects and have gained confidence in myself through doing this. I, I want to pause there. Yeah, this is the furry fandom is definitely like a place where people with disabilities or people who are struggling with their identity, it's kind of like a shelter to them, you know? It's kind of like a safe house because like we're literally being colorful, expressive animals. <laughs> What's more expressive than that? Like being able to show your identity as you really are through an animal. Yeah, I, I think it, the furry fandom definitely pulls in a lot of different types of people and especially is like a safe haven for those with disability. You can be yourself without having people look at your face and judging you. Some people are really self-conscious, some people are going through some stuff. It just, it really, it's so different for every single person, but I feel like a lot of people do just feel really comfortable putting on a costume and expressing themselves and performing, especially in a costume, because maybe they want to perform and they don't feel like they can do so unless they're covering themselves. For you to make it, I know there's like a lot of profit to be made. Does okay. anybody see you as like a predator for the furry community or like they, like a capitalist, a furry capitalist? Furry capitalist, <laughs> wow. <laughs> capitalist furries rise up. No, um, it's more so just, it's fun, but there's definitely money involved for a lot of people. Ooh, I think that was a good question that he asked. Cause like, I'm a content creator, I make money off the furry fandom, but like, I definitely agree with Bo. Like, it's sure there is money to be made in the furry fandom, but that's not why we're here. If I was here to make money, I would not still be making YouTube videos because honey, I don't know if you noticed, but my YouTube salary has been like all over the place. <laughs> Support my Patreon. <laughs> there are a lot of people that do take advantage of the market and for example, 3D VR avatars. A lot of people have been getting into that because there's a lot of money there. <laughs> but it's still like, it's a celebration of art. You have to be an amazing artist to make 3D models, 3D VR furry models. So even if you're in it with a mindset to make money, you're still making some sort of art. That's what I really like about the furry fandom. Very like art centered. There are, you know, young, younger people as well in the furry community. What is it like for them I guess going through the different phases of the, the furry community. Everyone who starts being a furry from a very young age has like sort of this uh, like uh, cringe phase where they just don't know how to interact with people, they're socially awkward. Pretty much all I'd have to say for young furries is be yourself, be kind, don't steal art. Oh, ooh, that was a good last point right there, everyone. Don't steal art. Also, don't impersonate, okay? I'm not speaking from experience or anything, but y listen. <laughs> Get your own character. No, just be respectful of, of others. And you don't always have to be so vocal online, man. You don't always gotta be starting drama on Twitter. No, I, I definitely agree. I, I definitely went through a weird, awkward, cringe phase of the furry fandom. And Fluke has been through it all. <laughs> yeah, there, there's definitely a past there. But as I grew up, I feel like Fluke has grown up with me. Sorry, I'm going on a tangent. Moving on. It was definitely insightful talking to you a little more about this. Thank you for your time. No problem. It's nice talking to you too. I commend you because you know it takes it takes a lot of uh, bravery and uh, courage to be able to express yourself in a way like that. Yeah, and the money helps. 
it really does enable a lot of young artists, a lot of just young people in general, old people, no matter who you are, to express, to create, to better their craft, to build costumes, to draw, to animate, to dance. It just inspires people to do all these different things that they normally wouldn't do, like make music. They're a bunch of furry DJs. Every single medium of art imaginable is in this fandom, and that's part of why it's so great. No one should feel shame for being a furry, even if you don't make anything, even if you just wear a costume and just enjoy it. You can do whatever you want and be happy, and people should respect that. Yo, I don't think I can follow that. <laughs> that was a good wrap up, Jubilee. Wow. I thought this was gonna be a little bit more pessimistic about the fandom, but those were some good answers. Bo, thank you for. I'm glad that they pulled you in for uh, answering these questions because some of them are pretty difficult. <laughs> but yeah, I have a lot to say. I don't know. I, I, I tried to answer the questions as they came, but uh, he did touch on younger furries. And I know a lot of my audience are younger furries, so I'm talking to you. It does take time to like get your footing in the furry fandom. Like if you say you don't have a persona and you want one or you don't really have any friends. There is definitely like places that you can go to make new friends. Like there are different Discord chats. There are Telegram channels. There's like different Reddit subreddits that you, that you can join. Well, like I used to have a Discord and a subreddit, but that got a little bit out of control. So I know you guys are gonna ask for it, but no. <laughs> but if you're feeling lonely, there is also uh, Twitter, but um, it's a little dramatic right now. But yeah, to my younger furries out there, just, I guess, be respectful of other people, don't steal art, <laughs> don't steal personas. I think the furry fandom is definitely a good way to kind of establish your identity and kind of explore different aspects of yourself. Like it's a, an amazing place for LGBTQ and uh, those who are transgender, especially like creatives, like if you're an artist or like a fursuit maker, dancer, DJ or anything, there is a place for you in the furry fandom. <laughs> so yeah. That was, that was a nice video. I like how optimistic it was. <laughs> I'm glad to have sat and watched it with you. And I, I'm glad that we got to spend this time together because it's been a while. <laughs> if you guys want these fursuit glasses, by the way, <laughs> guys, check out fursuitglasses.com, <laughs> okay? I'm just saying, if you get your own glasses, you also get a sticker. Thank you, fursuit glasses, for uh, sending me these really cute glasses. I feel so cute and nerdy. But yeah, if you liked the video, make sure to leave a little thumbs up. And if you want to see more stuff that I do in the future, make sure to hit subscribe. I'll see you guys next time. Bye-bye.